Welcome to EBS. Today we will be talking about Welcome to EBS TV. Today we will be talking about hot water system and renewable energy for residential buildings. What are the needs, which system for which cost and their pros and cons. So let me first explain why these systems are so important. Hot water represents an average of 20% of the total energy spent for a house in Melbourne. Not much, you would say, but in fact, these systems can also help you to reduce the biggest energy spent being heating and cooling. A solar hot water system can be used to heat the water for a hydronic heating system and therefore reduce the cost of heating. And an array of photovoltaic solar panels can also reduce the cost of any electricity heating or cooling systems. So it is quite important to know about these systems. Let's simply start with Charlotte O'Krim, who is meeting Mr. Water about his instantaneous gas hot water system. Hello, I'm Charlotte O'Krim, and I'm here at the home of Mr. Water to talk to him about his hot water system. Yeah, hi Charlotte. Um, look, there's nothing fancy here. It's just a basic um, instantaneous system. So when we moved into the house, uh, we installed this straight away. So we didn't couple it to the hydronic heating mm. system, but you can do that if you want to. It's a very simple system. Basically, your uh, gas comes in here from the street. Cold water comes in through this one. It comes into the system here and is heated. The exhaust gas gases come out the flue here. And then the hot water comes out through this insulated line here to be distributed to the uh, bathroom or kitchen wherever it's needed. It's a very efficient system. Um, the big disadvantage is because there's no storage of water, it's not instantaneous, it takes a little while to warm up, but we've minimised that effect by, uh, by placing it really close to the kitchen and bathroom and it doesn't bother us too much to be honest. And the one really big advantage is it's because it's instantaneous and infinite, um, you, can, you never run out of hot water. So if you have heaps of friends around and family, it's really great. Fantastic, and, it, and it's so small. Those hot water storage tanks are, are quite big, and you know, this one's it's really small. What a space saver. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I would uh, consider getting a water tank if we had a solar system, because then you need the tank to store the hot water. Um, but for this, it's not necessary. That's fantastic. Thanks for showing us this. It's been really informative. Thank My you. pleasure, Charlotte. This is Charlotte O'Cream reporting for EBS TV. Back to the studio. Thank you, Charlotte, and let's review the pros and cons of this hot water system. And starting your gas hot water system. It is a compact system, cheap to install and run. It can be installed indoor with a flue or outdoor. It is better to install near the hot water outlet, like kitchen or bathroom. Cons. There is limitation in the amount of hot water delivered. As it makes the hot water on demand, it will struggle to deliver a large amount of hot water. For example, if you are filling the bathtub and using several hot water taps in the same time. Also, there is no storage, therefore it can't be directly coupled to a solar hot water system. Please, magic pen, how should we draw this system on a plan? Magic pen!
So it is a simple and efficient system. Yet, some saving in energy and cost can be done if you use free energy from the sun. Let's meet our ground reporter, Albert du Duvet. This is ground reporter Albert Duvet, and we are again in the lovely company of Mrs. Duck. So Mrs. Duck, we can see here from the street that you have a solar hot water system on the roof. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, do you know which type it is? Yes, I do. It's a flat plate collector with a coupled tank on the roof. So how did you end up making the choice of that particular system? Uh, well, at first, I didn't really know much about the, t the different types, but once I started doing my research, I discovered there's two main types, the um, flat plate collector and the evacuated tubes, and each has their own you know, merits and disadvantages, and I just had made make my decision on my own circumstances. I see, and can you tell us a little bit more about these merits and disadvantages? Sure, well, first thing is price, so the flat plate collectors are much cheaper, mm -hmm. but the evacuated tubes are more efficient. Um, the evacuated tubes are also better in really cold climates because they're safer because the water can't freeze if the temperature drops below zero. Mm -hmm. But you know, in Melbourne, that's not really such an issue. Yeah. Uh, but the evacuated tubes also work for more hours of the day and they work better in cloud cover. Um, but unfortunately for us, it came down to, to price. We had to go with the flat plates, which were cheaper, especially since we, we only put them in the last year. So we missed out on the solar rebate, which ended in June 2015. Oh, that's a shame. Um, so where do you use that hot water? Um, so I use it with a gas post booster and mm -hmm. just for domestic hot water. Um, my neighbours though, they have the same system and they also use it for heating because they have hydronic panels. Apparently yep. some people do that. So when you were installing the system, did you encounter any challenges? Um, yeah, so we had to make sure that it was north facing and that the panels weren't blocked from the sun by any overshadowing trees or buildings. And we had to make sure that it was set at a specific angle. Mm -hmm. That's funny, when we were looking into it, we were getting asked all these questions about, you know, when did we use the hot water, and how many people would be showering at the same time, and what time of day we would shower. And at the time, we didn't really understand what that was all about, but um, now we've been using it for a while, it makes more sense. In what ways does it make more sense now? Uh, well, for example, um, if everyone showers at night, it's really good for a hot water system because it's been heated up and stored during the day. Mm -hmm. um, but if everyone's showering in the morning, um, then that hot water has cooled down overnight. So you need to think a lot more about what booster system you're using. I think that with hot water systems, it's not a one size fits all situation. Mm. I see. And what happens during the winter? Oh, well, obviously during winter, there's less daylight hours, so there's mm. less heating. Um, and so you have to, what we have to do is with the solar panel, we have to make sure that it's up at a steeper angle to maximize the sunlight exposure when the sun is lower in the sky in winter. Which it's annoying because in winter, that's when everyone wants the most hot water because it's cold, of course. <laughs> sure. Well, wow, you, you do sound like you do a lot about your solar hot water system. I sure do. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mrs. Deck. Um, this is Albert du Duvet, back to studio. Thank you, Albert, and a great system. This system was a carpole system, meaning that the hot water tank storing the hot water was attached to the flat plate collector. Now, if you desire a bigger tank or have a house with a roof structure not able to carry the load of a heavy tank, or also if you are going for more recent and efficient technology called evacuated tubes, in all these cases, you will need a decapole system, meaning that the collector and the tank will be detached. And usually the tank will be outside on the ground or inside in the roof attic. And remember, for a solar hot water system, the angle in Melbourne is 57 degrees. Please, Magic Pen, show us how to draw a solar hot water system on a plan. Magic Pen!
Let's now move to the second part of this program with the on-site power generation with our ground reporter, Charlotte O'Cream. Hello, I am sh reporter Charlotte O'Cream here at the home of Mr. Water to talk to him about his PV panels. Yeah, I, I, I love my PV, my photovoltaic panels so much. What, why? Oh, well, you know, um, I work from home a lot, um, so I use a lot of electricity during the day. And so I installed these a couple of years ago, and basically, you know, they capture energy from the sun and turn it into electricity. So it's amazing for me. I mean, I, it's very satisfying. At the end of uh, uh, three months, I get my quarterly electricity bill, and it's only $90. Oh, oh my gosh. And, yeah. and what type of system do you have? I have a uh, 1.5 kilowatt polycrystalline photovoltaic array. Poly what? <laughs> Polycrystalline. Well, what's that? Is there different types of what? Oh, don't get me started. So, from my understanding, there's three main types. There's monocrystalline, polycrystalline, and amorphous. The ones that people have on their houses are mainly monocrystalline and polycrystalline. Um, historically, monocrystalline have been the most efficient, but polycrystalline have been catching up uh, pretty quickly. Polycrystalline also uh, don't lose efficiency with higher temperatures, so that's good. Um, but to be honest, when I was talking to the consultants, what they told me was that the choice of manufacturer is more important than the, the type of cell type that you have. So tell me, how do your PV panels perform throughout the year? Because there's, obviously there's less sun in winter. Yeah, well, you know, I use uh, gas for my heating and hot water, so my electricity needs aren't that much. But obviously the, the array produces less electricity in winter when there's less sunlight hours. But the angle of the panel is such that it's uh, optimised for year-round energy production, as opposed to my sister's solar hot water system, for instance, which is optimised for winter production of energy. Okay, and what happens when you're not actually using any energy in, in the home? Well, um, obviously, I want being home during the day. I, I try to use the energy when it's being produced. You know, I do my washing and dishwashing and cooking with the oven and things like that. And I'm working from home sometimes during the day. Um, but the good thing is uh, when I'm not home during the day and there's power being produced by the array, it's actually fed back into the grid. Uh, when I had it installed, I signed a contract for 15 years with my energy provider um, that they would pay me for the energy that I fed back into the grid at a rate of 60 Eight cents per kilowatt hour, which is pretty good. 68 cents, oh my gosh, considering we buy electricity these days for about 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Yeah, oh my, and oh my. I know, right? But don't get too excited, oh. Charlotte, because my understanding is that nowadays the power companies are only offering about 8 cents a kilowatt hour, which, you know, is oh. obviously not so great. No, not at all. Um, does, is this, are people not then installing PVs? This, must, this is terrible news. Well, I don't know, I guess yes and no, because I mean, for people like me, it's okay because uh, I'm still using the energy during the day because I'm at home a lot during the day working. Um, but and the, look, the other option is that you can actually um, store the energy now. So there's a whole array of storage technologies coming online, like uh, Tesla's Powerwall, mm -hmm. where you can actually store the energy produced by the solar panels during the day and then use it at night. So that's a really good option. For me, I don't think I would look at it because I'm getting such a good rate from my energy company. But to be honest, if I was installing it again now and with the <laughs> rates that they're being offered, I think I would definitely consider it. Oh, thank you so much for showing us your on-site power generation system. Um, yeah, thank you. My pleasure, Charlotte. This is Charlotte O'Cream reporting for EBS TV. Back to the studio. <coughs> Very impressive and clever. Let's review this system in detail. So the array of panel will collect the sun and in Melbourne, the best angle is 30 degrees facing north. This array will generate 12 volts direct current and will be transformed by the inverter into 240 volts alternative current. This generated current will be used in the house for any equipment running or sent through the meter to the grid and this way you are a producer of green power and receive some money for it. As Mr. Water was saying, it is also possible to store this daily production of electricity into batteries like the Tesla Powerwall and to use this electricity during the night. Note that the batteries usually store direct current, therefore they are installed before the inverter. 
Thanks for watching EPS TV. It was hot water system and renewable energy. Stay connected. Oh, again?